The human personality is made up of identity and temperament. For the past few weeks, we've been studying about identity and identity crisis and how it affects the personality of a human being. I'm sure you've learned a lot as much as I have done. Going forward, we are going to be looking at the temperament side of the personality of the human being. Temperaments are made up of biological traits that we are born with. And because we are born with them, they are not affected by environmental conditions or circumstances. There are four major types of temperaments that we are going to be looking at. We we'll look at their strengths, their weaknesses, and how the God factor comes to fine tune everything. So join us as we explore the different traits or the different types of temperaments. And I'm sure at the end of the day, we'll all learn a lot from that. Hi, family. We promised you that part two of the Q&A session um, dealing with the temperament um, that we did over the few weeks that we've been um, talking about the four different types of temperaments. Like we said, we brought you the part one and today we are going to continue the part two. I'm sure you enjoyed every bit of the part one and you are ready for the part two. Um, may God bless and keep you. And I pray that um, today you would also be able to discover things that you did not know before to add to what you already knew to make you a better person because it's making me a better person each and every single day. The things I hear from the resource people, the things I say, most of them are under inspiration. So you'll be amazed that I say things and then I realize, wow, this is interesting. So I'm sure it will bless your heart today. So get ready and let's um, get into the part two of today's program. God bless you. There. We are going to look at our next question. And the next question is saying that, you know, there's a lot of similarities between the phlegmatic and the melancholic. So somebody sent this question. He said, what is the real difference between a phlegmatic and the melancholic? We want to start with Kweku for this one. Now, the difference is that uh, for the phlegmatic, for the phlegmatic, they, they tend to be um, very um, cold. Mm. And they, as you said, they'll take their time to even make friends mm. and they, they make the best friends. But then we see that the melancholic um, also makes friends much more easier but then they get offended. Um, they get offended or they build offenses easy mm. with those friends. And so um, as compared to the phlegmatic who will not really make like an offense an offense, they, they, they are more stable in their emotions and with decisions that they make as compared to um, the melancholic where they easily catch offenses and then they, their emotions keep um, moving, you know, it's, it's, their, their, their emotions don't stay the same because it's based on how they feel at a particular point. Right. So you can see that there are fluctuations in their feelings just because of how people are reacting to them and what's not. But as compared to the phlegmatic, although they all take their time to, you know, brood over things or think over issues, the, the phlegmatic will not easily make an offense or say that, oh, this one offended me and I'm not forgiving the person. And the person made me feel this way. The phlegmatic doesn't dwell so much on, on their feelings. Their emotions are very stable and, and very sound as compared to, um, say, the melancholic, where there are a lot of fluctuations. It's always about how um, my emotions are or how you are making me feel and all those things. I think that is like one major um, difference between the, the, um, phlegmatic and the, melancholic. the phlegmatic and then the melancholic. Oh, okay. I think that the melancholic is also a bit more active. Mm than the phlegmatic even in terms of even in terms of getting things done um the the once they make their mind to um get this thing done they 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 do it to perfection but then the the phlegmatic um will get things done but at, at a very slow pace at a very slow pace 
pace and then we don't they, they don't aim for perfection they all what they are doing is that oh i need to get this thing done and i'm doing it they, they don't do things with that level of efficiency and you know perfection as um the melancholic will so i mean these the, 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 there's a fine line between um the um, phlegmatic and then um the melancholic but off the top of my head these are the two things that i think um strike some differences between them okay i don't know if Pastor Ross wants to come in but then i will also add one or two just just to throw more light on what um we could said um when it comes to the me me melancholic it's more of the mood swing mm. and so their moods are always swinging so they are hyper today the next time they are low based on what it says but when it comes to the phlegmatic they are stable with their emotions and then when it comes to delivering on an assignment the melancholic although will pay attention to the details but he's ready to move out of his comfort zone to get it executed the phlegmatic will get the assignment done but in his comfort zone and so they don't go the extra mile to get the thing done they will do it so if it's something they will have to i mean go to a particular place to go get it they want to do it at their own pace without any stress and so they are the kinds of people you see there oh boy jumana no did last cry oh boy jumana no did he relax cry so we have we need this work by six o'clock so don't worry we'll get it yeah. there but boy jumani sir now we did it but the melancholic the mere fact you've told him that it should be done at six o'clock if he has to take extra steps to make sure it is done at six o'clock they will do and so you will see some level of sacrifice and then and uh going the extra mile with the melancholic compared to the phlegmatic on the uncle bivia he will relax comfortably and get it executed i i I, I I I wanted to say that, but because you stole my point, so we'll just go on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> because after saying that, a very good friend of mine has will say, you you said it all. So let's just go to the next question. <laughs> I think the next question is saying that. But yeah, yeah, quick, 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 come in before we, we, we go to the next question. Yeah, but I think that um the for example, the melancholic, the melancholic is not prone to a the melancholic is prone to depression yeah yeah but then the phlegmatic although they look depressed they they, they <laughs> because of that stability in their emotions they are not yeah. easily prone to mm. that kind of um thing you understand and and one more thing i want to do uh, or talk about is um that that very compromising nature of um the, the phlegmatic. phlegmatic yeah that, that's true they 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 are very com that they, they compromise a lot mm. and they can easily forgive mm. but with the melancholic no the melancholic is um a typical a typical prayer topic of the melancholic is god help me forgive <laughs> i don't know why i can't let things go that's like a typical <laughs> melancholic prayer um, point. Melancholic prayer point. A melancholic that has had an encounter with Jesus. Do, 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 that question will come in some way somehow. And then um, for the phlegmatic, it's 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 that um, compromising nature that draws people to them, it, because the people can have their way with with them or have their way around them they they are even drawn to them the more it's very it's attractive how accommodating they can be and that's one thing that attracts um um the phlegmatic to a lot of people so yes thank you very much for that part it's, it's I, I like the, the, the way you said that's their major prayer point in fact god help me to forgive at the end of the year yeah but for the sake of god <laughs> Okay, our next question is that what is the clear cut difference between the choleric and the sanguine? Let me start before any of you will take my point, just in case. So let me say my, <laughs> my two sentences, then I, I, I can leave it for you. The choleric and the sanguine. So I'm looking at it in terms of achieving a result. Okay, so 
the choleric is just going for the results and nothing else matters. It doesn't matter the people that are around. It doesn't matter how he will ignore everybody just to get the results. But the sanguine would also try to get the results, but in the process of getting the results, it should be something that is adventurous or fun. For instance, when a typical choleric is cooking, he's not going to be jumping and be excited about the way the stew looks uh, like very nice. And no, he will just taste and as if they, they are like, can I say they? I'm saying we are like robots because that is where I find myself. So in that department <laughs> where you, you know, you just taste it and you don't even smile, you don't laugh, you don't, whether it's bitter or whatever, you are just aimed at achieving the end result. But the sanguine realizes that if it's the same cooking competition, the sanguine will be cooking and dancing and tasting and do some turns because the taste is something else. So if you look at the choleric and the sanguine, the choleric looks as if they don't have emotions. And the sanguine is very mm. expressive. Every little thing, they like they add drama to it and, you know, and that is how typical choleric and a typical sanguine is. They will both get the results, but in the process of getting the results, the choleric is not looking for anything that will excite him or not. His aim is, I need to get five and I'm getting five. But the sanguine, I need to get five, but before I get five, let me take the three and turn it and, and, and take off the head and bring it to and mix and they are dancing along the line and that is how they get their results. So if you have two people and you give them an assignment to do, you will see the sanguine trying to make it more lively and the choleric is too focused, too focused. So the sanguine, most often than not, they don't get stress-related issues. The choleric will get it because they are still bent on doing it but the sanguine will make fun out of it, lighten the mood and then try to get things done a little um, on the lighter note. Yeah, so quick, we want to come in and then Pastor Ross will come in. Okay, so um, that's a very interesting question, though. Um, so I would say that if we are shooting a movie, <laughs> the sanguine <laughs> will be the actor <laughs> and then the choleric will be the producer. You get the difference? And then let's say if, if we, are, we are getting things done, um, the sanguine will be a speaker or a motivator. And then the choleric will be the builder or the laborer. So I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to create a picture here so that like the difference can be very um, vivid as to what we have on our hand. I like the fact that you mentioned um, how they use their charisma and you know, their fun nature around everything that they do. But then with the cholerics, we don't see that. Um, we see, all we see is seriousness, all we see is um, goal oriented. Another thing I just want to chip in on that basis is that um, the sanguine will easily get distracted mm. um, with um, things. But then, so it, it will take their focus off um, whatever that they are doing. But then with the choleric, they don't easily get distracted. And that can be an issue because um, they can even step on people's tools right. just to make sure that the goals that um, they, they, have, uh, they have in front of them is achieved. But then the sanguine will look or seek to please people um, more than um, get just the thing done as they are supposed to. So these are a few things. And then also the sanguine doesn't easily get angry mm. and doesn't easily, you know, have a tone to their voice. Um, they will have an argument um, just to sustain conversation but then the choleric will have an argument to drive home his point and to ensure that whatever that be the, whatever be the case, they are right. Mm. Um, mm. But then the sanguine will sustain an argument just for the fun of it, just to sustain conversation and, and to, you know, um, create an experience. But then the, the, sang, the, the choleric doesn't see it that way and we want to drive home their point. And so there are a lot of things that 
um, clearly will mark out um, the sanguine as um, of the choleric. And then also another thing I want to chip in is that the sanguine is extroverted in voice, mm. in voice. But then the choleric, although extroverted, is extroverted in action. And so they rather get things moving, get things done, um, than just talk about it or be vocal about it. And so in other cases, we see that the sanguine seems in a certain of um, public speaking, we'll see, we'll, the sanguine will seem um, more confident mm. and more vocal than uh, the choleric, although the choleric will go through their slides and will get the things or communicate clearly or articulate clearly what they want to send across. And so, yes, these are a few things that um, we see happen um, between the sanguine and then um, the choleric. Thank you very much. Pastor Ross, you, you want to add a few things and then we will go to another question. <laughs> <laughs> this is so unfair. <laughs> They've said everything. <laughs> 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 But you know, as a pastor, I took the edge and you you call the pastor to give the closing <laughs> prayer. So we'll definitely <laughs> have something to say. And um, so there is always um two pictures I paint when it comes to these particular characters. I said the choleric is the military man, and then the sanguine is the comedian. Mm. If you don't understand, the choleric is Nike, just do it. <laughs> the sanguine is LG, life is good. <laughs> With this, I think we have sorted. <laughs> <laughs> That's powerful. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, life is good, and just do it. Okay, just, just do, do it. it. Let us go. So Nike, <laughs> Nike, and LG. <Elsie. laughs> I've not heard this one before. Okay, so Pastor Ross, there's another question here, and he says that, mm. um. Statistically, it's, it's, it, there are less women who are choleric, and we we know the temperament of the choleric, and, and uh, I mean they are they are traits. We we know the way they are hot tempered, they are aggressive, they want to take control, and statistically, they are they are less in number compared to the male. Is it a possible reason? Is there anything that I mean caused this? And if you happen to be a woman who is a typical choleric. Is there any advice as to how you embrace it and bring out the best um, version of yourself, Pastor Ross? Wow. As for this particular one, it's like you have to buy into the mind of God why, why he did it such. Um, my, my small knowledge, for want of a better word, would say it's, it's because... Um, of what the choleric portrays as a temperament. You know, um, it's it's more of a bossy kind of temperament. I am in charge, I am in control. I call the shot. And you know, as, as human beings, some way, somehow, when you have a lady in that kind of, of, of position and temperament exhibited, it, it, it kind of um, um, paints a different picture of of a lady. So I'm just trying to use my um, little mind to explain why it is so. And so um, God, in His wisdom, have have limited it in a way so that uh, they they don't come often. Often with such women, you realize that they are either the firstborn of a family. Okay. And so they are born as the firstborn and then they have siblings who are male and so you enter into that family and you are like ah and then this lady is commanding you here and there you know if she is not the firstborn it will be very difficult for her to exhibit that kind of temperament because i mean as an elder brother you won't allow your younger sister to come and be bossing you about like that and so for most of the ladies i've seen who are choleric they are often the firstborn and their siblings are uh, 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 um, boys and so uh, they assume that role to 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 be in charge and make sure everything is in order and so for such a person uh, you need you need um, 
the kind of um, phlegmatic or the, the sanguine to be able to, to live with. Because if you take the typical melancholic as a partner, you will never, never be forgiven. <laughs> you will never, you will never, never, never be forgiven. Because um, they will re react to every action of yours to the extreme. But uh, God in his wisdom also makes sure that definitely is you're either going to get a phlegmatic, the I don't care type, or the sanguine on fine shena kumemu, and uh, you'll be fine. Mm. That that's my little take on these particular statistics. Mm. Kweku, you want to add something? <laughs> wow, it's a very difficult question. <laughs> to ask to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very very difficult. <laughs> as to why it is so? Um, yeah. It could be that maybe there are more, but maybe. Society has has made them fake it, <laughs> like mm. we're saying. <laughs> uh, but then, I mean, that 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 it's interesting to know um, how society and even culture is having an effect on um, this kind of temperament thing. But then, I would say that um, the choleric wife ideally um as pastor ross said will will move to or will be attracted by a phlegmatic husband and uh, most likely these scenarios they work perfectly um where the man himself will tell you that oh my wife there yeah, that's how she is she takes charge of everything so please listen to her <laughs> pay attention listen to what she's saying <laughs> have your peace so, um, so, and and they are so calm and so and and those most of these relationships are so successful as to mm -hmm. how um, even though the woman is taking charge, they are moving. The family is doing so well, so well, and 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 we see most of the phlegmatic men um, married to choleric women will be like, if it's not for my wife, I don't think. I would have achieved all that I have now. And they you can see that level of trust and that level of confidence they have in um, a phlegmatic wife or a phlegmatic, a, a, a choleric wife or a choleric woman. And, and it's very beautiful to behold. I've seen instances of those things um, play out. And it was like, it's very interesting. I don't know well, much about um, the sanguine, um, the sanguine husband and the um, um, choleric wife. There's a likelihood that that will bring um, some level of infidelity or on the part of the husband or the sanguine man or just because they they want to be entertained, um, they are not people that are so loyal or want to be in some in a space where it's it's, it's boring. They, they they although they like people and are very accommodating or very forgiving, um, it will is it will soon bore them that ah. Uh, what is this like you know and and that um natural sanguine nature will want to jump onto the next interesting thing oh every day is just about um, um work 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 she doesn't even have make time for me every day she's going to work media i'm going out with my friends uh we are going to chill and hang out and all these things um one thing will lead to the other and we see you know all these kind of things so you see how the dynamics play out yeah. Yeah, but then I mean, for 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 the choleric um, wife, she will need to be able to exercise a lot of patience, a lot of love, um, just so that she can be there for her family, she can be there for her children, and she can be, you know, um, present in the life of her husband and in the life of her her children. Well, okay, I think me for the. The little I can say from where I sit is that 
I think maybe God did it in his own wisdom because you see the natural tendencies of the choleric, which has pride in the egoism and then also arrogance. If you come into relationships and most importantly in marriage, if God does not help the typical choleric, even if it's, it's a man, you realize the extreme to which the choleric personality can be. They make everybody around them feel inferior. They just push people around. They get angry easy. And that is not what you want a wife to be. So I think going forward into marriage, it becomes challenging if you've not had an encounter with God and the Holy Spirit is helping you to tame down the rough edges of the um, choleric. So if you are a typical choleric who has not had an encounter, you realize that you have a lot of problems in marriage. You want to control, you want to push the man around, you you shout and you are angry and all of that. So if you don't get somebody like Pastor Ross is saying, who is a typical phlegmatic, who will say, and yes, she like, well... Yeah, German and car. Let's just let it. I mean, let's just let, let it slide. And you meet somebody who is, um, let me say, even a melancholic, who dwell and think and process everything you are saying. That person can be put into um stress related issues. Or if you meet another um choleric, then it's going to be head on, because when you speak, he she will, he, fire for fire. You, uh, you you know what I mean? Fire for fire. <laughs> when you speak, he will speak. When you speak, he will speak. And nobody wants to calm down for the other party. Now, we know that biblically, the Bible is saying that the wife is supposed to submit to her own husband. So, the submission will be difficult if you've not had an encounter with God. Because your natural disposition is one of, I want to be in charge. That is why, from the beginning, we are saying that the temperament, the best version of it, is when God helps you through an encounter. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you get born again and all of that. Then God begins to help you to deal with all of them. But the choleric is very much um, explosive. That is why I think the person asked about when a, a, a woman is choleric and why God did not make a lot of them. So the few ones that you see, they aspire for big posts and everything. And if you look at their husbands, their husbands are not cholerics because then they will have an issue. So you see women who are doing very well and chasing their career, their husbands are very supportive. And I, I, for me, I'm thinking in the wisdom of God, that was why um, he did not create a lot of women cholerics because it's difficult to deal with it. They are very, very unstable. They are very, very, they, you cannot predict them. They will just vent out and they don't um, put filters in their, in their emotions. They don't really care about you. And you can imagine if a wife is behaving like that towards a man, it can be, a little problematic. So I think the few of them that are, are, are out there, your prayer point um, should be that God should help you to deal with the pride, ego, and arrogance that is natural of a choleric. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. I am a typical choleric. I had to pray for grace to help, I mean, for God to help me deal with the pride and arrogance. It, it comes in a very subtle way. You don't really mean it, but later when you think about it, you realize that I mean, it came out like that. So there's a lot of work that goes in there. So I'm, I'm sure by the time God will prepare you for marriage and all of that, if you make that a prayer point, you will become a choleric, but you will be a very beautiful version. You are still very purpose-driven. You are passionate, but that angry best and all of those things will not come out. And whoever you marry would enjoy you very much. Yes, Kweku, you want, you want to come in? Um. So... I have a question for uh, you and Pastor For, for me. <laughs> Today yeah. we are helping you, so we are not here for questions from you. So, um, well, um, so what do you think attracts um, the choleric woman to either a phlegmatic man or um, a sanguine male or a, sang a, a sanguine man? Pastor Ross, you want to go first? Please take the lead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you said a choleric lady. What attracts the mm -hmm. other temperaments to her, right? Yeah. I think because they are only aimed at going for results and they need somebody that will support them. They need somebody that will, that will watch their backs. 
Because if they know themselves and they know that they are typical cholerics, they would know and appreciate the fact that they don't get details right. They don't appreciate the fine prints. So it's a different thing if that choleric woman knows herself and her weaknesses. Then the bond or the attraction that he or she is going to look for, I mean, she is going to look for in the spouse is going to be somebody who is going to complement those things that she doesn't have. But if she doesn't know or ad- accept herself that these are weaknesses I have, then she's going to probably be looking for somebody who is like her, who is also purpose-driven and they are only chasing target. Later, would they realize that in the context of marriage, it will be difficult. Because the other day, I think you were saying something and you explained and said that two typical cholerics marrying, they will achieve results in terms of the physical things, making money and business thriving and all. But they will miss the intimacy bit. They will miss the love that they need to show to their children. Their children will not have their attention to share their fears and their concerns. So they will provide everything for the children, the best schools and everything. But at the end of the day, the children who are their heritage, you see that they will lose a lot of parental care and attention because the cholerics will seemingly not be available or will seemingly be busy chasing their goals and their um, targets. So it depends on if the person knows themselves, they know their weakness, and then they look out for somebody who will compliment them. So a typical choleric woman who knows that these are my weaknesses, she will look for somebody who is detail-oriented, a phlegmatic or, I mean, a melancholic person who will come and add the fine dot. Or else, if you are somebody who is um, a public figure, a, a choleric, you will go out there and deliver, but you see that it's not very, it's not very detailed. Is not properly organized and there is no perfection to it because all you are focused on is achieving the results. But when you get a partner who is not a typical choleric, they will help you to tidy up the mess here and there. And you see that together, you become a very um, fine um, blend. I don't know if Pastor Ross wants to add something and then maybe Kweku will answer part of his question because I'm sure he, he, he had an answer to it. <laughs> <laughs> Underlining every human being is the desire to want to have somebody who compliments you right. and not compete with right. you. Every human being is looking for somebody who comes in as a compliment and not a competition. Mm. And so a typical choleric in the midst of people is looking for that one person who has singled him or herself out quietly. Mm. And so they are naturally drawn to such people and that it, 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 it's automatic. It, it's automatic. It's just the same way just when we have a positive and a negative. There is no way, there is no way a male housefly will go chasing a male housefly. Mm. Naturally, it is there that you want something which is not your type to compliment you. And so these things come naturally but when you see a typical choleric going after a typical choleric then it could be that they want to pursue a business venture and not really to settle down in marriage so it depends on what the person is looking for Mm. if the person is looking for a, a home setting that person will never go for his type but if the person is looking for a business partner he would definitely go for his side. Wow. That is my little take on it. This is not little. This, this is very, very serious. <laughs> this is a very, very deep. A very serious <laughs> quick, 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 You want to add your, your voice and then we, we look at the next question. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is very deep um, as to what you, the two of you have shared. Um, well, I just want to add a few things to it. So like how Pastor Ross said, uh, like pulls repel, mm. unlike pulls attract. Mm. And so there's a tendency for the choleric wife to find um, support, Mm. to also find um, tolerance and peace, peace of mind Mm. in in, in the phlegmatic husband. To the fact that their life is so chaotic, very busy, and then they come to this man and this man is giving them so much calmness, so much um stability so much support and so accommodating that attracts them Mm. 
um, to the phlegmatic man. And then the phlegmatic man also sees um, a choleric woman as someone who is industrious. And that alone attracts um, them to uh, the, the choleric wife. On the case of the sanguine, um, the, the sanguine is attracted to the choleric on the basis of how spontaneous um, they are. It, it first, in the initial stages, triggers that kind of adventure that they are looking for mm. in their lives. And so it becomes like an interesting journey as to pursuing the choleric um, um, woman. And then also on the other hand, for the choleric woman, they tend to find the sanguine very fun loving. Um, it's, I call it beautiful distraction mm. for them where um, that kind of lightheartedness and, 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 and distraction um, is quite entertaining for them in, in early uh, or like in early stages of the relationship. And so it attracts them to um, the sanguine. And so, yes, as Pastor Russ was saying, when two cholerics meet, it's most likely there's an agenda behind it. Probably they want to start a business. Yes, um, that is like very true because a choleric, a choleric can easily enter into a marriage relationship just because of a goal mm. that um, they believe they want to achieve. And regardless whether they have to say um, enter into a marriage covenant or um, step on people's feelings or cut corners just so that they hit their goals, they are easily able to do those things um, for goal's sake. And, they, and so they are able to also stay in the, if the goal is to stay in the marriage, they are they are able to stay in the marriage because their goal is to stay in the marriage. And so they are not doing what they are supposed to do to sustain or give life to the marriage. But then they are just there because we said we are in the marriage, you know. So all these things, it's very interesting to know. And then I believe that as we are discussing these things, our audience um, are following keenly and, and they are getting a lot of insight from the discussions we are having so far. Thank you very much. And viewers, we just want to encourage you that if, if, if you just tuned in, you want to um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, you want to send this link to as many people as possible. We have today in the studio, Pastor Ross and um, Kweku Dakujima, who are helping us to deal with the comments and questions that you sent in. And so far, it's been, it's been beautiful. If, if you um, listened to us last week, you realize that we've already dealt with some of the questions and we are continuing um, as well. So I think from um, the ones we have now, we've actually partially uh, answered them here and there. Most of them have got to do with marriage and relationships. So I'm sure we're not going to spend too much time here. So I think um, this time, Kweku will go first. Does it mean that everyone should know their temperament before getting into a relationship or marriage? Does it mean that you need to um, know your temperament? Um, or should I? Okay, no, I think Pastor Ross will, will go for this one before. Because Kweku is, is Kweku, Kweku, Kweku needs to cool down his, his generator. Um, as I wrote, let me let me come. <laughs> <laughs> let me come in before. Oh, Pastor you know, you, comes uh, so that he wouldn't take your your point. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh no, no, not that, not that. I I'm I'm sure Pastor Ross has a lot to say. So let me just give the surface level, and then uh, Pastor Ross will take it up from there. So ideally, even in counseling, they do talk about it. Um, they do talk about temperaments. Um, so that is in preparation to get married, just so that you're able to discover your partner and discover yourself. Mm. Primarily is to discover yourself first okay. and then to discover um, your partner as well. As to how that will inform your decision to pursue the relationship, that is up to you. Um, and Pastor Ross will talk more on that in terms of their counseling process and what they... <laughs> <laughs> what they do as to that. But I, I believe that for me, like my personal experience during our counseling session and um, um, during, before I got married, when we were having counseling and discussing these things, I didn't really know much about the temperament. But then I wanted the best temperament as to, I wanted 
the best of almost all the temperaments. So if phlegmatic, they are calm and stable, that is what I want. If um, melancholics are analytical and um, people who uh, um, say, uh, how, how do I put it? Positive sides of... You mean the, the um, melancholic, their positive sides? Yeah. They are very analytical. They get they are perfectionists. They they do things very yeah, yeah. well. So, yeah, they do things very well. Perfectionist. I want that as well. <laughs> you want a cocktail. Cholera. Yes. <laughs> um, so so it's like then you really don't know yourself. And then there's this whole um um you know, this whole how do I call it blindness because of where you are. You find mask. yourself. There is actually a mask. Yeah, there's actually a max or a skill on your eyes because of where you find yourself and how well you want to really please and impress your partner. And so you really cannot, you know, dive deep into that the, the very nature. But then I, I believe that that will, the, knowing yourself ahead of time will help you make a good decision mm -hmm. and then also will actually help you to um, come find someone that will compliment right. you um but then i mean to i don't know if that is enough reason or enough um you know premise for you to make a decision as crucial as that or leaning or relying solely on the um holy spirit and then uh, the direction of um, God as to what to do when you are making those decisions. So, I mean, just to, just off the top of my head, this is like what uh, I have to say about it. Okay, I think I'll- But I believe okay. Pastor Ross- Yes, I would um, also say one or two before Pastor Ross will come in. I think, um, like you rightly said, it's not enough premise for you to um, make a, a life I mean, a life partner for, I mean, a choice for a life partner, because this is a, a, a journey that never comes to an end. It's just, it's just enough. For, it's just good knowledge for you to know and for you to have it to help you to um, kind of live at peace. And like you said the other time, it helps you to pray specific prayers. So me, for instance, yeah. I did not really pay attention to temperaments. I didn't really know about temperaments that much. I knew these choleric and melancholic existed, right? But to say I sat down to analyze them, to know that this is me, this is my wife, I didn't know. And unfortunately for us to counseling, we were not taking through temperaments. So they dealt with other things, you know, the submission and love your wife. Those are the kind of things. So I entered into marriage without any knowledge of temperament and knowing myself and this is the way my wife is and that. But over so many years that I started to now learn about temperament, it will surprise you to know that I see the traits and I see how God has helped us. How my mm. anger bit about the choleric has been changed and how um, now I pay attention to details unlike my raw choleric self when I was younger. So I've seen the hand of God upon me and how it has shaped me so like we are saying i did not know i did not learn them but i had already gotten into marriage and i'd allowed god to help me because after an encounter with god i yielded my whole being to god and god had helped me and i've come to now read these things and i realized that oh so the encounter has worked on all these wrong things even though i did not know them theoretically so it's important to know them but the key is whether or not you yield for the Holy Spirit to help you. So I, I was just trying to say that to add to what my, my brother Kwekweku was saying, that it's good enough, but that's not enough premise. If you allow the Holy Spirit to help you, everything will work out. So the key is yielding it to the Holy Spirit to be able to help you. And that is how some of us have been able to come um, this far. Pastor Ross, you want to um, come in now if you are ready, sir? Okay. So, like I was saying, these three things come to play in marriage. And subconsciously, all these partners have these three things in mind. Mm. The issue of sex, the issue of money, and the issue of raising their children. And so, in the typical counseling class, they'll tell you as newly married couples, 
do as much as possible like five times in a week because you are fresh you are you have a lot of blood like, like there's nothing to hinder you and so do that and so if your temperament makes you sexually active and the person you are marrying has a temperament which is not sexually active you are going to have a lot of challenges mm -hmm. and i pointed out a typical choleric because they are business driven and resource oriented they are so much buried in work that they don't have time to be romantic. And so if you are that kind of a person, you will always feel the relationship, the marriage is not going the way you want it to go. You, want, you are looking for a touch and he's not there to touch you or she's not there to touch you because he is buried in books. There, there was a scenario where um, I had to counsel a couple where the man was so much of a choleric that even on his marriage bed, he had his laptop and his documents there, sorting things out when the wife is in <laughs> oh, the mood waiting for a tap. My God, what is this? <laughs> and so, so these things, as though they look, they look very funny, but they play a major role. Right. And as a pastor, I can yeah, tell you, over 85% to 90% of issues that come to us has to border around the bedematics. Mm. Because mm. it's either the man is not performing or the woman is not performing. And this is not about sexual weakness. We are talking about people who are just not interested in sex. Yeah. Wow. And so this will play out in your choice of a partner when it comes to temperament. Now, on the issue of, ma of money, we have been taught that sanguines are the people who know how to blow cash. That's right. That's right. They know how to, they, I mean, if you want to know how to spend money, spend the time with a sanguine. Mm -hmm. They'll teach you how to spend money. <laughs> that, those are the kinds of people. They know every joint, every, every farm place in town. So if you have money, you don't know what to use the money for, please consult them. And so if you are that type of a temperament who is very meticulous about how much money to use, where to spend the money, the things to use the money for, and you go in for a sanguine, a typical sanguine, you guys are going to have issues when it comes to your finances. So often during counseling class, you ask couples, do you want to um, have a joint account or a separate account? Everybody will opt for a separate account. Because they don't want to risk having a joint account for one person to be blowing their cash <laughs> and then the other person always on the, on the reserve side. That's right. And then when it comes to the issue of raising children, mm. you know, because the choleric is the resort-oriented type and the bossy type, that home is the kind of home where you say it's a military camp. Yeah. Yes, sir. Master, wake up, go and back. Why haven't you brushed your teeth? Ah, everything is like obey before complain. Mm. And you know, in raising children, discipline is key. That's right. Like I said, you work them in the name of Jesus. That's very true. But when your temperament is that type, who is always like, oh, and yes, she, oh, and yes, she, oh, and yes, she. If God doesn't come in, your children will be, will be spot. Yeah. And so in choosing of a partner, you need to also consider these temperaments. So mm -hmm. that is how deep temperament goes into counseling and that is why we make sure that in as much as we are teaching everything we spend time to tell them what they are venturing into in the light of their temperament so they don't come back in shock or they they, they don't wake up to a whole different person in their marriage wow quick do you want to say something before i jump to my next question um i think that pastor ross has said it all Okay, and I, think, I like the fact that he gave examples. Yeah, as to... this is, is is very very I mean elaborate and it's very very good. I'm sure my viewers are just enjoying themselves and sincerely, this is a very delicate thing. You need to pay attention to it. You would want to um listen to this video over and over again. If you're a young man and you are having a young woman who you are trying to get married to, consider all these things. Don't just go in for the beauty. There is more to it than what you see outside there, especially to do with marriage. Most people in their first two months will tell you, I did not know this is the way it was. I would have taken my time. Yeah. So if you have all these resources available, make good use of it and then go in very, very well. I'm sure we've probably tackled yeah, this one, one, but yes, go on. One thing that um, I wanted to see was that 
uh, for me, I when I got married was when I really discovered <laughs> my temperament without any doubt. And so it's interesting <laughs> as to how marriage will reveal you and mm. will paint a picture of who you truly are, regardless. So I mean, it's it's a good journey and it's it's quite an eye opener. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much. I think now there's a lot of Practical questions here and there. We have some few minutes. We just want to run through them quickly. So this one will go to... Okay, Pastor Ross again. I'm already married and I just found out my temperament and that of my spouse. And it explains why we both behave the way we do. My husband is a phlegmatic and I am a choleric. What advice would you give me concerning the way I deal with him? I think we've we've, we've gone through this already. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Uh-huh. We okay, have... so then I'll jump to the next one. He didn't give any specific. He just said that, um, no, she didn't give it. She said, my husband is a phlegmatic and I am a choleric. And they didn't know before. And now they understand oh. why they are behaving the way they are behaving. So he's saying, is there any advice that you would give concerning the way she should deal with him? Because she is choleric and the husband is phlegmatic. No, so we, we, we just um, will advise that she has to be patient with her husband mm. and not see the husband as timid or lazy. Um, she should see her temperament and then at, at also um, embrace the husband's temperament as well. And then the husband should also not see her wife as aggressive or um, too authoritative or mm. you know, uh, over forceful or something. They should be able to accommodate each other one has to be patient with the other and then um the um other party which is the phlegmatic has to be able to tolerate and i mean easily let go on the things or the things that the um, choleric wife might do oh, okay yeah. i think that, that that is fine um, the next one is saying, does it mean that two people of the same temperament will not do well in marriage? I think we've dealt with choleric, choleric. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we've we've already dealt with, with, with that one. So the next one, he said, I've noticed I'm in a relationship with a sanguine. He tends to entertain a lot of friends and females as well. And I am the direct opposite. So we are looking at maybe a phlegmatic or a choleric. I don't want it to come off as if I am restricting him when it comes to his friendship by complaining all the time. But truly, I am uncomfortable with it. Is this a sign that he is likely to be unfaithful in marriage? If yes, what do I do? Um, so who will take this one? Kweku, I think. <laughs> Yeah, this is very interesting. I, I remember when when we were talking about the sanguine, we did mention as part of their weaknesses that um, there's there could be um, some level of disloyalty right. or infidelity or something of that sort just because of the way they jump um, ship on to the next interesting thing. Mm. So... Yes, there are possibilities, but then we we already know that once there's an encounter and once the person is in Christ, things play out differently um, for the for the individual. And so there's a possibility all the temperaments can be unfaithful or um, cheat or do it, whatever. But then as to who is the center of of their life is what really matters. Another thing is that the sanguine likes attention and they like to get attention, especially from um, um, people. And so it is natural for the sanguine to want attention from even males and from even females. Uh, But then there's a need for you to be able to trust and believe that um, this is them, but then they will not cross those boundaries or because of the fact that they believe in God or their position as Christians, um, you trust that they will not cross those lines because you cannot enter into a relationship or commit to someone having doubts about um, where they really stand in terms of their um, loyalty to you. 
And so these are a few things that you might want to consider. And then um, as time, as you move on, you, you're able to tolerate those things because if you should ask him not to do that, it's like you are, you are snatching his life away from him as to um, he shouldn't go out, he shouldn't make friends. Like that is the source of life for them. Mm. But then what we can do is to be able to manage those things as well um, with wisdom and, and with insight and direction um, to be able to manage those things properly in within the marriage or relationship setting. But then ideally you cannot snatch it from them because that is how they are. They, they come alive whilst they do those things. And so um, we believe that this is important as to not taking it from them and then allowing them to, but then trusting them as well. Thank you very much. I think because of um, time constraints, we have two more questions. We'll just quickly go through them. So we don't, um, I mean, um, spend too much time. As I was, this one, I think, even the, in fact, the, the last two are for you, but we, we also chip in here, uh, here and there. It says, apart from the change that come by the Holy Spirit, can, for instance, a sanguine totally change to any other type of temperament because of life experience? I think we've answered it a little bit from the beginning. Yeah. 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 So then let me um, just go to totally, the last one. Totally. Unless, okay, you want to okay. say something, then I'll go to the last one. Uh, I, I just want to address the word uh, which was used there as totally. Yeah. Totally, no. Mm. But like, we could made us to understand when the, 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 the circumstance or the situation that um, led to that change surfaces, the person will call in. Mm. And so, totally, mm. dear, no. Uh, but when the circumstance comes comes up again then the person will likely call in into that um and different temperament okay thank you very much the final question Whew. finally finally the scripture admonishes us to attain perfection in all like christ so may i know if christ exhibited these temperaments when he came to the world based on the fact that temperaments are normal and not sinful <laughs> we save the best for last <laughs> <laughs> we really did save the best for last okay Very so pastor ross will go and then kweku will come and then i'll wrap it up and we will we'll, we'll, we'll greet our people and then we can call it a day uh, yeah so that i don't see what everybody will have to say i'll say the answer is yes um, I will just cite one scenario and then I will leave the rest for my senior men to um, address. So uh, in the counter where Jesus Christ um, asked, who do men say that I am? Um, the disciples, everybody some said you are John the Baptist, some said you are this, some said you are that, some said you are that. And then he said, okay, who then do you say that I am? And then the Bible said, Peter answered that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus makes it clear that flesh and blood has not been revealed, has not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. Then some few chapters down the line, Jesus now is talking about his death. And then the same Peter who saw caught the revelation of who Jesus Christ was now said, ah, I will not allow anybody to kill you. If they want to kill you, then they will have to kill me first. Mm. Then Jesus Christ spoke to Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. That is a temperament at play over there. The tone in which Jesus Christ spoke to Peter was understood by Peter. That's why Peter didn't get upset. Mm. If Jesus had used that same tone on John the Beloved, John the Beloved would be upset. Mm. And so Jesus exhibited temperament in his leadership skill. That is why he was the best leaders ever existed mm. on the earth. Because when you look at Peter, Peter is that typical guy who one would say is a fisherman. Quick, quick, quick. You know, those people, they are not well cultured, they are not well managed, and all of that one. And yet in that same team, there is Judas, who is the accountant. 
This guy is meticulous with everything. He's so meticulous to the extent that when the woman came to break the alabaster box, he valued the alabaster box, how much money it will, the alabaster box will cost, and then what the money can be used for. Peter didn't care about that particular matter. And so we, did, we never heard his voice. Mm. And so you could see that what made Jesus the best leader who ever existed here on earth was because he understood the temperament of men and he himself exhibited. So he knew how to address each and every person. So when Jesus was addressing Judas, he said, whatever you have to do, go and do it now. Mm. And that spoke to the temperament of Judas. And quickly he woke up and went. And guess what? When Judas came back, he came with a meticulous formula to betray Jesus. <laughs> he said, the one I will kiss is the one we are after. That's and right. so you could see temperament at play in the leadership of Jesus. So my answer is a typical yes. Jesus exhibited temperament and his leadership skill was the best because he understood the temperament of men. Thank you so very much, Pastor Ross. Quickly, you want to um, put the icing on, on, the, on the cake for us? Yeah, um, so yes, Jesus exhibited um, temperament uh, traits as we, as Pastor Ross said. And then we, we, are, we can actually define the temperament as a choleric. We know cholerics have this leadership um, like nature where they want to get things. So for someone who saved the world and saved mankind in three and a half years is someone with some strong level of urgency. Please don't let the other temperaments come after your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I am out of the woods. <laughs> 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 so, 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 so it's, it's interesting to know you you actually see the level of agency um, in and through his ministry from one place to the other and then overnight we are going let's go on the way um, like we, we saw after they gather a crowd then the next time they are on the boots heading to somewhere else and then the next time you let's go here let's go and pray let's do this why are you sleeping wake up why is the temple this way why why are you selling in the temple uh you know we, we see all those things play out and even even to the extent that at at which point did he um like all the things that happened and then we can tell that this he was a choleric and exhibited those choleric um, um, temperaments. But then we, we, we saw that he exhibited the, all those temperaments in, in the fullness of, of, of God, that is in, in wisdom and in love and, in the, and with the spirit of God. So we, we can't really point out like, um, like limitations as to what really happened, but we can see from the way he handled situations, from the way he went about his business, from his leadership skills and everything as to um, the kind of temperament um, he is. But he did it with perfection. And, and that is the beauty of it, that we also can also do it with perfection if we will submit to his authority, if we will submit to his grace, if we will submit to his leadership over our lives, we can be able to do because the, the path of the righteous is like a shining light, shining ever brighter onto a, a perfect day. And so we, we, we can, there's no way that we will say um, we cannot, like how we, you were saying, how your life has been transformed, that saving grace, that transforming grace is still available for everyone who, um, decides to avail himself, him, him, him or herself to um, Christ. Yes. Thank you very much. I think you you just gave a scenario about Jesus being choleric. There are instances where he, de he demonstrated the phlegmatic, he demonstrated the sanguine. Don't forget that his first miracle, actually, he did it at a wedding. And a typical choleric yeah. will not go to a wedding. 
he doesn't care about the wedding, but he went to the wedding. He was interested. He was concerned about the feelings of the couple because, you know, in the Jewish culture, not having enough drinks for the people to they celebrate for weeks. So not being able to celebrate yeah. would have been something very terrible. It would have been brought a lot of shame and disgrace. So he salvaged the situation and cholerics typically don't do that. Because cholerics are not interested in anything fun and activity, but you see, no, but if they are Christ, interested in weddings, that uh, they are in, they are not interested in things that they don't perceive as important. Mm. And so, if they are interested in, if they perceive something to be important, they will give it maximum attention. Mm. So, for instance, a choleric can perceive fitness as very important. Mm. They will pursue it with all diligence. Another choleric might not see fitness as important. They might see, um, let's say, uh, weddings as important. Mm. They won't concentrate on um, fitness. They will ignore it as if it never existed mm. and then concentrate on, let's say, weddings or uh, visit, going for attending weddings or anything of that sort. You, Father Ross, you want to add something? Um, Jesus is 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 an embodiment of all the temperaments. Exactly, that's and what that's what I wanted to all, say. Absolutely. They all come to play at at different um, functions and then different occasions. Yes, and so yes, Jesus is is, is an all round temperament. Yeah, so that that was what I wanted to add. That. In the life of, I mean, the wedding bit, you see the sanguine coming in. He joined everybody. He became a people's person. And then another time, you see the phlegmatic when the Pharisees brought the woman who had committed adultery. He didn't act mm -hmm. a typical choleric. He didn't act mm -hmm. a typical Absolutely. sanguine. He was, he was meticulous. And then he was also a phlegmatic. He, he, he didn't allow them to give him pressure to give them the answer. He took his time. Mm -hmm and give the mm. answer at his own time. So you see a little bit of melancholic and phlegmatic in there. So we just wanted to put it across for our viewers that Jesus also demonstrated temperaments. But the good thing is that he was not as a result of the sinful nature. So he did not Absolutely. have the rough edges of the temperament. So any temperament he demonstrated, he demonstrated their strength and their weaknesses yeah. did not show. Yes, Pastor Ross. You took out the juice, the juicy part of his choleric temperament when he entered into the temple and yes, they were yes. doing business in the temple. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He <laughs> worked them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And, and they were, they were in the name of That's the juicy name. part of his temperament. <laughs> you gave me you gave a scenario in where he went to the wedding. Mm. The, when the drinks got finished. Okay. Yep. Um, his mother came to him and said that, oh, the drinks are finished. What can, can you do something for us? He was like, what did he say, Ma uh, madam? He said, <laughs> he said hey, madam, woman, he said, woman, my like, time has not yet come. What do I have to do? Yeah. He said, my time is not yet, what? Mm. My that time is not yet come. A very, it's a typical choleric response, yep. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was because a typical really choleric that, response, yeah, yeah. but then yeah. he ended up also using the phlegmatic that for the sake mm. of peace and the love I have for my mother, I'll still go ahead and do it. Mm. Absolutely. But exactly. that phlegmatic Absolutely. is not out of fear, it's out of love. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. So every demonstration of Jesus Christ was the good side of the temperament. And that is what we are saying that Jesus, whilst he was on earth, also demonstrated temperaments viewers unfortunately if i don't take care these people will not allow us to end the program today <laughs> but yes we've had a very very interesting time i just want them to say hello to a few people and then i'll wrap up for today starting with pastor ross and then um quick who will, will, will follow my uh, message it's been one, an interesting uh, day and i want to say a big thank you to god for even giving us the opportunity to be here and to my Elder brother, the man of God, the, the apostle himself, who is staring there first. Um, to Philos Lamte, want to say thank you. And for that unseen face behind there, who is working the miracle, I want to say we appreciate you. And to my senior brother, Kweku, on the show, I mean, it's been a blessing and an honor to be here with you, um, just to assist you to answer some of the questions. To Dr. Daniel, 
Pastor Macjuris and then Pastor Isaac Ayesu of the Court Network. God richly bless you for your contribution in my life and to my lovely wife, Mama Lydia. Thank you for always being a support. Thank you. Okay, cool. Pastor Ross has said it all. <laughs> 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 so, thank you so much our first thanks goes to god and then to uh the papa himself pastor theophilus slavte and the wife and to Mimi. we thank you so much for this platform it's been a blessing to so many people to so many lives and we are grateful to god for this and also my regards to the jima team i know they'll be watching and also to my lovely wife. Um, God bless her so much. So yes, thank you guys so much for this opportunity. What an amazing time is being in the house today. Thank you so much, Pastor Ross. Thank you um, very much, um, Kweku Daku Jima, for spending time with us today to carefully deal with the questions and the uh, things that were bothering our viewers. I'm, I'm so convinced that God has used you to um, clarify a lot of the things on our hearts. And I've learned so much. I'm sure my viewers have enjoyed every bit of it. We just want to say God bless you and thank you so much. And we know that if Jesus tarries, we'll definitely have you coming around again, probably to deal with um, different topics or different um, discussions here and there. But we just want to bless um, God for your life, that may God bless and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Till we meet again next week, viewers, we say we love you and stay and stick around. Bye-bye.